So let's assume we want to solve this integral right here, uh, the integral from a to b, e to the minus m, f of x, dx. If f of x is just any function possible, uh, then in general, this is going to be an impossible integral to do, right? Because, I mean, we, we only know how to solve a few a few integrals of this form right here. I mean, we, we can we can do if f of x is equal to x squared, and the bounds go from, you know, zero to infinity or minus infinity to infinity, then we can do that. But as soon as you par start putting any any weird function up here, we don't know how to do that integral anymore. Uh, and so, so, so a question that we might ask ourselves is, how, I mean, what, what do we do in that case? If, 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 if we still want to get some information about what, how this integral behaves, um, but f of x is some arbitrary function, is, is there some way of approximating this integral uh, where, you know, we won't get the exact answer, but we'll learn a lot about the problem from that. So let's look at a special case, and that's the case where m is really big, and uh, f of x has a well-defined global minimum. And so let, let's just... Uh, think about what that means graphically. What, what that's just saying is that uh, this function f of x right here looks something like this. You know, may, maybe it's a parabola. I mean, if, if it's a parabola, then we know how to solve it. Um, but if it's not a parabola, then maybe it's it sort of it looks roughly like a like a skewed parabola or, or something, something such that uh, there's this well-defined global minimum right here. And, and, and there are and, and everything else is sort of a lot larger than it. But what does this mean for this integral right here? Well, if we plot the integrand, we, we can plot the integrand, say from minus a to, or, or from a to b. Uh, if it's just you know a parabola, then this is just a Gaussian. Um, but uh, if it's not if it's not a parabola, then it's uh, it's not going to be a Gaussian, but it's going to be pretty close, right? So, I mean, if this if this if we're looking at maybe this 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 green function right here, then you know, we won't get a Gaussian, but we'll get something that's kind of, kind of, it's kind of similar. It's, it's, it's going to be shifted a little bit. It's not going to be completely symmetric. Um, but to a good approximation, it is going to be um, a Gaussian. And so what does that mean? That means that uh, if we have some function that looks something kind of like this, then what that means is that this f of x right here, or, or this integral right here, we can treat as a Gaussian integral um, to a good approximation. And so that's what I want to do. I want to, I want to try and break down this integral a little bit and treat it like a Gaussian. So how are we going to do that? Well, I mean, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we're going to do a Taylor series of f of x right here, right? So if we if we Taylor expand f of x, what's that equal to? Well, that's equal to, you know, whatever we're f of x naught, whatever whatever we're centered around, plus f prime of x naught, x minus x naught, plus f double prime of x naught over two, x minus x naught squared. Okay, um, what should we be centering about? Well, if you want to do a Gaussian integral, uh, then it kind of makes sense to center it around the peak. So let's let's set this x naught equal to this point right here, or, or this point right here, whatever the global minimum of the function is. And if we do that, then you can see that the, the first derivative right here is going to be zero. So we, this term right here drops out. And we're just left with um, the zeroth order term and the second order term. And so in that case, what do we have? We have that our integral, our integral can be written like this. Integral a to b, e to the minus big number f of x dx. That's approximately equal to uh, integral, integral a to b, and then, and then what? Then e to the minus m f of x naught minus uh, f double prime of x naught over 2 x minus x naught x minus x naught squared dx. Okay, um, this is our approximation. We know how to do a Gaussian integral, but our rounds are still from a to b. But notice that uh, the contribution, as we argue from right here, I mean, the, the contribution is only going to be large near this, uh, the contribution is only going to be large uh, near this global minimum, right? Because that's going to be when, uh, when, when, the, when there's the least amount of exponential decay in our integrand. 
And so because of that, I mean, th this integral right here is roughly the same as the integral where we let the bounds go from minus infinity to infinity, because the function is not going to contribute that much to the integral outside of a and b, as you can sort of see from this cartoon here. Uh, and so because of that, uh, we can rewrite this whole thing. We can pull out uh, this guy right here as a constant, f of x naught, uh, and then we can just let this integral go from minus infinity to infinity, and we have e add to the minus f double prime of x naught over 2 times x minus x naught squared dx. Okay, and this right here is the Gaussian integral that we know how to perform. And if we do this, then what we get is uh, we have our, our first term out in front. And then uh, from our Gaussian integral, we get square root 2 pi over m f double prime of x naught. And this is something that we can for sure calculate given this uh, this initial problem right here, right? Because, I mean, why, why, why are we doing this? We're saying that, you know, sometimes f of x will be so complicated that we can't exactly solve this integral. But if our integrand approximates a Gaussian, then we can use this approximation scheme right here, and we can turn it into something that we can solve easily, right? We all know how to take the second derivative of some function right here, right? And so just by doing that, we're able to get a decent approximation to this function right here. Um, so I think I'll stop here. Th this whole method right here is called uh, Laplace's method. And in the next video, what I'm going to do is a, an example of this. I'm going to look at the factorial function and drive for you the asymptotics of that function. So, so look at, look at the, the, the region where it sort of starts looking like a Gaussian and then make this approximation and see what we can learn about the factorial function from that. Uh, so I hope to see you in that video.